So now we've prepared our program to use the same structure that we have in our API. We've built this TS file, which is like a model file is the way I like to think about it. And we've come into our food list. We're bringing that in as an array of Marriott food objects that we're going to store in something called food data. And this is actually working great. If I save this, the, the program's working. It's just that there's no data there. We passed it an empty array as the initial state. And so that's all it's doing is printing out the empty array. And so we need to be able to go get data from that server to populate this table that we've got here. So if I go up to my uh, dot, uh, my, my uh, API and I run this, now I'm gonna run it using, if I right click on here and say, open in terminal, and I'm gonna say .NET run. So this is gonna be running in the background and it is now, and it says press control C to shut down, but it's sitting out there. The data's out there now waiting to be consumed at some point. It's just sitting out there. And I can actually see this because if I come into my, uh, let, let's see what where we're running at first. So if I go into, uh, let's see the properties folder and I go to launch settings.json, where I'm gonna be sitting at right now is probably this HTTP localhost 5003. So if I go to open a new window here and run this, of course I'm not gonna get anything there, but if I go to that local host and type in Marriott food, then it's going to have the information that's sitting out there in a JSON object waiting to be consumed when React is ready. And so now back to Visual Studio Code, so that's running, that's running in the background. Again, we can control C to stop like we did in, or like we've done with, uh, in Visual Studio Code. So then back to the, um, let's see, Visual Studio VS Code. Then in here, I can uh, get ready to consume that data. And so what happens is we do, we, we make what's called asynchronous data calls. And that's one of the beauties of React is it can load up 10 of the elements on the form. And if there's an 11th one that doesn't have the data yet, it doesn't stop the page from loading. It just waits until it gets it. And so it happens, the data transfers happen asynchronously when the server's ready, when it can get the information, but everything else on the page gets loaded up. So you picture something like Netflix, if the video isn't loaded yet, it'll just show that little blank screen, but it'll have the little box around it with the text. It has the element there, it's just waiting for the video data to come in. That's what we wanna set up. And so the way we do that is this. We're gonna set up another const, and this is gonna to be to go uh, to fetch the food, well, let's give it a name first. So this will be fetch the food data, okay? So this const is gonna be set up to an action rather than uh, you know a, a piece of information. It's not a variable, it's going to be a, a function that we're setting up here. And this is the key, we say async. So we're setting it up asynchronously and we set up that async braces. This is what we're going to do. So we're going to do a couple of things. One is we're going to set up a const that we can just refer to as whatever. Uh, uh, RSP is what I called it in my notes. And I can't remember what that stands for, but uh, this is a common setup. But we say go and await, and we're going to fetch the data from, and then we paste in that address. And then we give it the, the link. So this is going to come from Marriott Food. So this is where we're going to get the Mary uh, food. So this is the, the address to go pull that data. And of course we can click on it to go see if we can get there and we can. So go get the data from there first of all, await that fetch. And then another const we'll call um, just F, for, short for food. I'm just trying to name this differently so we're not getting food everywhere and you get confused of what's what. We're going to await the rsp.json. So it's gonna send us some JSON that we're gonna drop into this const we call f. And then once we have that, we're gonna call our set food data, right? The, the, the way that we update the state, we're gonna say set food data, and then we're gonna pass in the data that's come in that JSON object. 
Okay, semicolon at the end of that. And then we're going to call our fetch food. So this is all just setting up a function that we're gonna call. And then we say, fetch the food data. So again, these are just like variables being set up at the beginning of the program or whatever. We're setting up these little uh, things that are gonna happen. And then we actually call that fetch food data. All right, so let's go ahead and try this and see what happens. So I save that and I go to my website and I've got a whole bunch of errors. Failed to fetch, failed to fetch. Something's wrong. This was not anticipated. What did I do? Whoops, here, control save. Well, I'm not exactly sure what happened there because that time it didn't give me any errors. Oh, I know what's wrong. Haha. <laughs> All right, so there's a little problem we have, which is the computer doesn't know you're a developer. It doesn't know you know what you're doing. It thinks you're some just amateur uh, and you're going to break something on the computer. And so we have to do one more one thing more in .net, which is to set up the security to allow us to be able to grab that data. So let's close all tabs. Our last step then is to go into well not our last step, but our almost last step is to go into the program dot cs file and tell dot net it's okay for people to come grab data from that place and so after the add swagger gen line i'm going to come in here and say builder services dot something called add cores okay and cores i've got it in my notes here what it stands for somewhere oh man what is it cross-origin resource sharing. So we've got two different sources here that are gonna be sharing with each other and so we need to set that up. So we're gonna add cross-origin resource sharing and then we just need to pop in one more line here. Down before the HTTPS redirection and we'll say app.usecores And then p lambda, it doesn't need to be p, it can be whatever you call it, but with origins. So we're saying with origins, and the origin for our um, React app is what? Localhost 3000. So I'm, I'm basically allowing these to talk to each other. It's not letting me copy that, but it's easy enough to type in. Um, so with origins, I'm okay with origins where the origin is HTTP colon slash slash local host colon 3000, then that's okay. All right. So with origins, what is it app? No. P dot with origins. I actually don't know this one. Oh, I just spelled it wrong. Whew. Okay. All right. So with origins, uh, localhost 3000, and I'm okay with that. So I'll save this file, and then I'm going to need to rerun. So I'm going to need to come down here and control C, and then I need to do my .NET run again. Now that I've got the new information in there. So it's going to run. It's running in the background. So now I go to my React app. And let's see what happens here. So I control save here. Control save. Refresh. Do something. Oh, I do need to refresh actually. Yeah, okay. So I need to start a new session. So I need to restart this app just like I restarted um, just now. But it, it says it's got some errors still. Let me close this and then stop this from running and then do an NPM start again. So now we're starting up with the server already running and now we get the data, wait for the error and no error. Perfect. Oh, error. <laughs> okay, we gotta fix this one in the next video. Spencer out.